let's continue with this have checking transformer. So some transformer may have tab so that you can change the turn ratio and also the uh, winding turn number of winding for each side of the transformer. We want to adjust the tab in order to adjust the output voltage from the transformer and then when we adjust the output voltage the reactive power flow will also change so uh, okay if the tab is on the primary side you can move the tab down to boost the secondary voltage or if the tab is on the secondary side you can move the tab up to boost the voltage uh, two types of transformer the first one is no load tap changing and the second one is under load tap changing for the no load one uh, you can adjust the tap when there is no load I mean when the transformer is out so you have to disconnect the transformer from the system in order to adjust the tap for under load tap changing you have to uh, this type of uh, transformer you don't have to turn off the transformer you can adjust it when the current still flow thing like that mm, the tap changer can be something like manual or automatic uh, this is the symbol of a tap changing transformer you can see that okay there is an arrow here you can adjust the tab for this one the tab is on the high voltage side pH uh, okay you can change from this tab to this tab when you change the tab you can see that uh, the turn ratio oh sorry the number of turns here also change and also the turn ratio can be changed So this is the element that we use to uh, adjust the tab. First, we have we must have the tab changing mechanism driven by the motor. So this the motor can uh, move the tab up or down, something like that. And then we have a voltage regulator and also the tab delay element. Uh, for this thing, we just measure the voltage first and then uh, we adjust the tap according to the voltage. We try to regulate the voltage at the output of the transformer, something like this. The last one is line drop compensator. So the thing is, we may sometimes, okay, if the circuit looks like this, this is the source and then we have transformer here with tap changing and then okay this is a feeder and and the load so the thing is we try to control the voltage maybe around here at, at the terminal of the transformer we may want to adjust the voltage here so in order to do this in order to do this, we measure the voltage. We have a voltmeter and then measure the voltage. And then this voltage is used to adjust the tap. Okay, this voltage is used to adjust the tap. Uh, in general, we can measure the voltage at the terminal of the transformer but if you want to regulate the voltage maybe around here in the middle of the feeder we can also do that by using the thing that we call light drop compensator for light drop compensator we just we, we still measure voltage here but we try to simulate so for example this is V1 and this voltage is V2 
they are not the same, right? But we can simulate. Okay, you can say that you can see that okay, this is the curtain and the line also have R and L, right? R and then some okay, SJS here. Yeah. We can simulate this by P1 equal R plus JS and then the curtain plus P2, something like this. When we measure the voltage V1, when we can use this equation of KV2. The line of compensator is just R and X, something like that. That you can uh, measure the voltage here and also the current here, and you try to make do some calculation to calculate the voltage V. This is the line of compensator. Then we have setting for something like Okay, reference voltage, set point, bandwidth, and delay time. This is a feature of that. Okay, we measure voltage here using voltage transformer. And this is the measure voltage compared with the set point. And then this mechanism is used to adjust the tap of the transformer. This is another one. Okay, suppose this is one per unit nominal voltage, maybe. Okay, the voltage looks like this. This is the plot of voltage versus time. Suppose the voltage looks like this. And then this is called, okay, this is called bandwidth. This is called bandwidth. When the voltage is inside this band, the transformer does not do anything. When the voltage is inside this band, transformer does not do anything. But when the voltage drop below this band, 0.625% for some time, this is the time delay. If the voltage drop below this for some time, the transformer adjusts the tap to boost the voltage. So the setting will include the setting include the voltage set point, the bandwidth of dead band and delay time. Okay, this is the the set point, is this one, this is the bandwidth, and this is the delay time. We can adjust this setting for the tap changing transformer. Okay, this is the diagram for doing that. Okay, you have reference voltage, and then you, you measure the voltage as an input, compare with the reference voltage. Then uh, the voltage go to the difference, go to the time delay, and if the, uh, if the voltage drop uh, more than the time delay that we set, the motor will drive the tap change the tap of the transformer to change the tap position, something like that. You can also use light drop compensator to say this one. Actually this one is light drop compensator. You can use the tap uh, this is the voltage that you measure. And you measure the current here, and the current multiplied by R and X, something like this. So that you, you get the voltage, maybe at this point. And then this voltage is used as an input, something like this. This R and X should be similar to this and this. You measure the voltage here. But you try to calculate the voltage at such a point, maybe at here, something like that. Okay, this is for light of compensator. The measure voltage is compared with the reference, and if the voltage further exceeds the dead band, 
big sum to test it for a certain time. The signal is sent to a motor to actuate the tap changer. Time delay is used to preset unnecessary tap change. Okay, the time the useful of the time delay is to prevent unnecessary tap change. Sometimes the voltage just go up and down. Right? Sometimes the voltage is just go up and down. If if the voltage just drop here and then it go up, the transformer does not need to do anything, right? So the time delay is used to prevent something like that. Okay, the tap position reflects the time ratio, and there are some limits of the tap changing. The number of taps is limit. So this is the light off compensator. It is used to regulate the voltage at a remote point. Uh, you can use some this kind of uh, equation. This is the voltage, the calculated voltage, VC calculated voltage. This is the voltage at the terminal of the transformer. Okay, this is the light off compensator. Then, okay, this is tap changing transformer. Any question? The tap changing transformer is a transformer that we can change the tap position, we can change the number of turns. Okay. Then, this is voltage regulator. The difference between transformer and voltage regulator is transformer will change the voltage level but the voltage regulator does not change the voltage level the thing is okay if you have transformer you have transformer like this okay this side may be 115 kilovolt this side may be 72 kilovolt. But for the voltage regulator, this side 22 kilovolt, this side still 72 kV. Same. This is high volt and low volt. The voltage here and here are the same. This is voltage regulator. Do you know why we use this? Because we can adjust the tap of the transformer. This is voltage control device. So uh, the voltage regulator is auto transformer with tap in the series or the secondary winding. You can also adjust the tap of the auto transformer to control the voltage. This is voltage control device. It is not used for voltage transformation. I mean, this side and the voltage at this side and this side is in the same level, something like this. Uh, it usually installed on distribution feeder. Yes, we have transformer at the substation, right? We may have voltage regulator maybe in the middle. We may have voltage regulator here in the middle, something like this. In the middle of the line. So this is 115, this is 22, this is 22 and still 22. This is voltage control device. We can use this to adjust the voltage. Okay, do you still remember this auto transformer? This is primary winding. This is secondary winding. Okay, okay. Primary and then secondary. 
and the primary and secondary are connected together like this plus auto transformer in the moment that and RS is the switch we can call it driver switch and uh, the thing is if the switch is here and here the polarity change the polarity the dot suppose the dot is here and here if you connect this switch to this point uh, the current goes into the dot or something like that if you connect to the switch to this point the current will go into this way something like this it can change the the uh, the sign of this The voltage in the CD winding is add to or subtract from the primary voltage depending on the polarity. So you can use the switch to change the polarity. Uh, the CD winding, the CD winding, this winding, the turn ratio, the number of turns of this can be varied according to the tap. So this is the voltage regulator, similar to the tap jamming transformer, but the voltage here and here are in the same level, something like that. Okay, this is to be the same. You can read on your own. Okay, next, regulating transformer. There are two types of regulating transformer. The first one is voltage magnitude. The second one is phase angle. Depends on what you want to regulate. Regulating transformer consists of exciting transformer and series transformer. Can you give it for the the picture? This is voltage magnitude regulating transformer. It means you want to regulate the voltage magnitude. So this is three phase diagram, three phase ABC. Maybe difficult to understand. So this is single phase representation, easier to understand. Okay, you have two transformer exciting transformer which is this one and series transformer another one so two transformer okay then this transformer okay you try to measure the voltage here VAN this is VAN and exciting transformer okay this is VAN this is another voltage the third ratio here uh, is used to define the voltage here. And this voltage is applied to the CD transformer. So the thing is, VAN prime, this is the output voltage. Output voltage on this side is equal to the input voltage plus this one. Right? This is the output is equal to the input plus the voltage across this transformer. Voltage across this transformer is delta VAN. The thing is, we can use this tap changing transformer. You can use, you can adjust the tap here to adjust delta VAN. So we can control the voltage output by adjusting this tab, delta VA. When we adjust this tab, the voltage delta VA and will change, right? When we adjust this, the voltage here will change. And 
if you try to figure out the face angle, delta V A N is here. The face angle of this delta V A N and V A N should be the same, right? If this is zero degree, this is still zero degree. Because this is this is just a transformer. Face angle here and here are the same. And face angle here and here are the same. Okay? Because this is a just a transformer, single phase transformer. The face angle of the primary and secondary are the same. So it means you you try to add something in phase with V A N. Delta V A N and V A N are in phase. So this regulating transformer you can uh, boost or uh, make the voltage lower by adjusting this. So any question? For this, you adjust the voltage magnitude. For this one, you adjust the phase angle. Okay, this is three phase. Maybe more difficult to understand. So let's see this one. This is kind of single phase representation, but it's not that. The same equation. V A N prime. This is output. Output is V A N prime. Input is V A N. And this is delta, but not delta V A N anymore. This is delta V V C. So, according to the diagram, you measure the voltage V B C here, right? This is VBC. So the phase angle of this and this are the same. And this is the same as this, right? The phase angle here, here, and here should be the same. The thing is, phase angle of VBC and phase angle of delta VBC are the same. And this. This is uh, the diagram, okay, three phase, VAN, VBN, and VCN. What is VBC? VBC is VBN minus VCN, right? Okay, this is VBN, this is minus VCN, so this is VBC. You can see that the angle of VBC and VAN are 90 degrees. This this angle is 90 degrees. So it means this is so suppose V A N is zero, delta V B C is 90. It means that you can adjust the angle of V A N prime, right? From this equation, the angle of V A N prime will be adjusted because we add something 90 degrees. Okay, if we have, this is V A N here. Delta V B C is what? Delta V B C is this thing. And then what is V A N prime? V A N prime. You can see that if you add this voltage, V A N prime equal V A N plus delta V B C, and this and this is ninety degree. You can see that you can change the angle of VAN. Right? You can change the angle. The angle will be something different. So 
so the new question but for the uh, for the magnitude they could have been transformer this is V A N and you have capital V A N here so V A N time would be something like this the magnitude change but the angle does not change but for this you can change the angle and how about the most how about the magnitude how about the magnitude of VAN and VAN time the magnitude is the length of this right the length is almost the same a bit different but almost the same the thing is this this is small this is small delta VBC is small also delta VAN is also small not not large small one This is example 11. So we have two buses, bus 1 and then bus 2. Connect to parallel transformer T1 and T2. Uh, T1 is with x equal to 0.2 per unit. T2 x2 is 0.4. So the transformer is represented by such a big x. Okay, this is one transformer and another one. Bus two is load bus. This is load bus. Supplying a current. This is the load current. Assume V one is adjusted so that V two remain constant at this value. V two is constant but V one can be adjusted. Find the complex power transmit to the load to each transformer if okay the first one a equal to one this is a okay a equal to one the second one t2 is regulating transformer it boosts the voltage by five percent so a is 1.05 the third one uh, the magnitude is still the same one, but the phase angle changed by three degrees. Okay, now can you do this? First, okay, this is the circuit, so you need to draw maybe a single phase representation of this. Okay, this is the voltage source. This is bus one, V one, and then you have what? This is a X one. This is a X two. Transformer one and then A. This is V two and the load. This is current and load. Something like this. And from this, if you draw a circuit, you may have something like this.
ีดิงฟิวส์เคยชอบบุเคยเรียนรอไอโนดคิดถึงไอโนดฟิวอีฟอลไอวันพลัสไอทูไอวันกรามพลัสไอทูไอทูกรามแอนด์นี่คือวันพอยโอฟาสแอนด์ก็มาแบบโปรติฟายดีกรีนี่คือกีเวนเดนวิธีการใช้ KVL ก็ชอบโปรเซสหลอกนี่คือดาทูลูนี่คือเฟิร์สลูโอเคนี่คือเฟิร์สลูและเดอะเซ็นต์ต์ลูคือนี่สองโอเคเฟิร์สลูก v 1 equal v 2 plus j x 1 i 1 t i m e this is v 1 equal this is v 2 plus this thing j x 1 i 1 t i m e okay the second loop v 1 equal v 2 divided by a plus j x 2 a ก็คือ j i ถูกพรามนี่คือ this loop ไม่มี more difficult so This is current I two plus this current is I two, and then this is J X two. Okay. If the voltage here, what is the voltage here? This is V two. What is this? V two. What is what? What is this voltage? The turn ratio is one a. What is this voltage? E two divided by a, right? What is this current? I two equal. The turn ratio is one. And then I to charm right because A can be complex so I'm going to remove from A. So for this side, you will have V1. Okay, this loop. Okay, V1 equal what? And then after that, just substitute the value. V two is this. This is x one. And V two is this. And this is a is one for the first one. For problem a, a is one. And and this is x two. Okay, a is one. One point eight. 
and then you have two equations. This is the first equation. This is the second equation. Two equations with two variables, I1 and I2. So we can easily solve to get this. This is the current I1 prime and I2 prime. This is the current here. here. If you want to calculate the power flow to the load, this is the load. You want to calculate the power flowing to the load by this part and this part. So the power going into the load flow from transformer T1 is V2 I1 conjugate. V2 is here and then I1 is here. So this is the power right here. Let's want to get the power from here and also the power from here. This plus this is equal to the power going into the load. So S T1 V2 I1 conjugate you get this and this. This is real power, this is electric power. Any questions about this? Next one, do the same thing, but change A to one point zero five. Right? Say A is one point zero five. Change A to 1.05 and A conjugate will be 1.05. Do the same calculation, you will get this. If you compare this result with the previous one, what is the change? When you adjust the voltage, does the power change? When you adjust A, the third ratio, the result also change, right? Mm -hmm. But first, compare the real power. Compare this to real power. Real power almost the same. Real power almost the same. Then compare relative power. The relative power change. When you adjust the voltage magnitude, the reactive power change, right? You increase the voltage here. So the reactive power will change. I'm oh, sorry. You just compare A with B, okay? Compare A with B. 09 and then go to 31 and 24. You can see that the relative power change. Then this is another one. Adjust the angle. This time A is 1, angle 3 degree. So V2 divided by A equal this. This is A conjugate. So angle minus 3 here. Do the calculation. Get this result. You can see that this time the reactive power compared C with, with A. Okay, compared C with A. The reactive power 09 and 5 almost the same, but the real power change a lot. Real power change a lot. So when you adjust. The angle, you can adjust the real power. Right? When you adjust the voltage angle, you can adjust the real power. When you adjust the voltage magnitude, you can adjust the reactive power. So it means, okay, you have two transformers. You have two transformers. You can adjust 
the power flow to transformer one and two by adjust this turning flow. Okay, yes, yeah, 
Oh, on Monday. มันบ่ายโมงผมไม่ว่างครับไปมันวันศุกร์เลยได้ไหมครับ Friday 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 or Thursday Friday Friday 1 p.m. How about Tuesday Hey sorry Thursday I have class Have class This is afternoon right So let's talk about morning. Tuesday morning. Okay. Friends, who are not here, will have class. Thursday morning. Same as the power system analysis. Okay. How about this? Monday morning. Uh, actually, yes. How about this Monday morning or Wednesday morning, and we will cancel this class.
distribution system both the edge gets the edge so when we talk about distribution system uh, it usually starts here at, at the substation right distribution starts at the substation so the substation usually have transformers in it but the substation gets the power from where? Transmission line, transmission system. And this process of zero left hand transmission system, right? Transmission system can be represented by Kelvinian equivalent circuit. You know this Kelvinian equivalent circuit. The entire transmission network can be represented by this. Uh, the Kelvinian equivalent circuit will include both source and impedance. Both source and impedance. Both uh, source VS uh, called open circuit voltage. And this is Kelvin impedance that is like this. This is equivalent circuit of the entire transmission system. <coughs> then uh, for high volt system, MS is usually large, that, uh, much larger than R. This is for transmission. For transmission system, S is usually much larger than R. So we can just name it the resistance and then the impedance will include only JX. For low volt, this does not true anymore. For low volt, R and X are pretty much the same in the same order, so we need to input R as well. Okay. For high volt, we can neglect the resistance. For low volt, we have to include R. If we use Kelvin equivalent circuit to represent this transmission system, we can just represent by Jx and it's enough because R is small. But if you want to use Kelvin equivalent circuit to represent maybe here, you have to input R as well because uh, the low volt circuit R is comparable to S. The magnitudes are almost the same. Then we will talk about this short circuit RC. First, we want to have short circuit current first. Short circuit current, it means we try to short this short circuit. So, short this with this and try to calculate the current. Uh, 
Keren ISBI Hobi Festival by Scrap If you make it, you can get the festival by expected Okay, we talk about the fully the magnitude So we never say the fully the magnitude Then you have short circuit capacity The short circuit capacity is the power here The charging capacity is the power flow from the storm cell. Power here. So SS3 will equal what? PS IS3 conjugate, right? PS IS3 conjugate. And if this is like neutral, this is like current. So this is single phase. So if you want something three phase, so multiply this by three. Okay, and this Vs is like to neutral, right? So this is called short circuit capacity. So the short circuit capacity is just that, and then. Substitute S into here, then you have what? We we S divided by that S conjugate, right? But in the slide, we just uh, want to have only voltage, uh, only the magnitude. So it will include three. V S V S divided by X S or divided by X. That one is just only the magnitude. Then, if we set V S to one per unit, you will see that S S C in per unit, charging capacity in per unit, you see just one over F S. In per unit, we set the voltage magnitude to one per unit, and we just change the base. So the charging capacity in per unit is just one over ten. So the thing is, if this Z or S is high, the charging capacity will low, right? Because if this uh, if this impedance is high enough, the current will be lower. The charging capacity will be lower, right? If impedance is high, the current is low and the power is also lower. Something like this. The charge circuit capacity is used to measure the strength of the bus. We can classify the bus into strong and weak buses. And this charge circuit capacity reflects the magnitude of the impedance, right? It has the charge circuit capacity has relationship with the impedance. is the indicator of how much the voltage may change and related to the voltage regulation of the system. So suppose we have this system and then I'm going to this. is 
but the Lord, the Lord can change, right? You can change the power consumption here and new this is time. You can change the power consumption of the Lord. Like this. If the power consumption of the Lord changes, does it affect the voltage at the load? Power consumption change. This is high load. If the power change, the current also change, right? The current also vary according to the power. And then what? If the current, if this current vary, the voltage drop also vary. So you can see that. Vs equal V load plus that S and then I load. Right? If this current varies load also vary right? because this is fixed. V load will also vary. Right? If the current vary according to the power, this is fixed, so V load will be varied. Then if that S is high, if this value is high, it means the load will have a lot of variation. The voltage at the load will vary a lot if that S is high. That is correct. If this impedance is high enough, the current also vary at the same. This will vary a lot. Because the voltage drop here, actually this is the voltage drop. If that is big, if this is huge, the voltage drop will be huge. And if the current varies, the voltage drop will vary a lot. That is good for the system. No, right? We want to have constant voltage or something like that. So, the system with high impedance, we can say that this system is weak. Weak means the voltage will vary a lot when the load changes. However, if this is low, if this is low, the load voltage will not vary much. We call it this system is strong. Okay? If this is low, the voltage will not vary a lot. We call this system is strong. Can set it be zero? It means this voltage is ideal voltage source and the voltage at the load will be constant. So this is super strong system, right? The, the voltage at the load will not change at all if that S is zero. This will be super strong system. So if that S is high, the short circuit capacity will be lower, right? If that S is high, short circuit capacity is the, it will be low. If that S is low, short circuit capacity will be higher. If that S is zero, S S C will be something infinity. So the 
exactly it's capacity you measure the strength of the system as well so on the system you have high transitive capacity weak system you have lower transitive capacity Distribution line are usually short. I mean, when I say short, I mean shorter than transmission line. Okay, transmission line is longer because it needs to connect one region to another region, right? For transmission, but for distribution, usually shorter. So we can represent this distribution line by short line model. R and X. Or sometimes we represent it by medium line model R X and then B. Do you remember that? Right? We have short line model, medium line model, and long line model. But usually for distribution line, we can represent by just fully short line model. Or maybe you can include the capacitor, medium line model. Uh, for medium volt and low volt distribution is medium volt and low volt, right? The line resistance usually comparable to the reactance and cannot be neglected. Usually we have to include this R. For transmission line, we, we have lossless line, right? Distribution line, we usually include R. Then Okay, this is the line. Then we go to this load. So the load. We usually when we talk about the load, what do we think about? Do we think about voltage or current or power? I mean at your house, do you measure the current or voltage? Maybe not when you measure the power, right? At, at your house, because you have to pay the bill. So you need to measure the power or energy that you use, and then you have to pay it. Okay, when we talk about the load, load characteristic it means real and reactive power of the load. The real and reactive power of the load can vary, right? according to your input state so it can vary uh, as a function of voltage magnitude we can consider real and reactive power separately so this is the load model the voltage Dependency of the load characteristic can be represented by this exponential model. Exponential model. We can classify the load into constant power, constant current, and constant impedance. So I want to talk about constant impedance first. It will be easier for you to understand. So this is the law. 
eight minus six ten is no five. constant current flow. So P load equal P load and then I load. Okay? And then this current is constant. Constant. P0 is just a constant. So 
if P0 is equal to P0, the power of U is 0. This exponential again, P will be 0. If AP is 0, this term disappears. So P0 is equal to some constant fix. We call this constant power law. Law. It should be lining and also AC, right? Something like refrigerator or something like that. 
Más Crawford to Crawford Colin than Crawford to Killian. The voltage at the load and the voltage at the source does not change much because this is orthogonal. It is 90 degrees, so the magnitude, magnitude means the length, right? does not change much. For resistive load, the voltage at the load does not change much. The voltage magnitude does not change much. If the load is just purely inductive L, the load is L. Voltage drop here will be in phase with the uh, with the uh, Vs. So this is the voltage drop in phase with Vs. Voltage drop in phase with Vs. So the voltage at the load decrease. The voltage at the load drop below Vs. Voltage magnitude quite sensitive to the load current and fall very much below Vs. The voltage at the load here drop fall very much. Okay. Example here is Chan reactor that we we uh, talk about in the last chapter. Another one, this is purely capacitive load. We add B here. You can see that the voltage change a lot. The voltage magnitude change a lot. And if we add the load is capacitive, the voltage at the load will increase, will rise very much above Vs. Okay. If the load is R, the voltage does not change much, fall just a bit. If the voltage is L, the load voltage will drop pretty much. If the voltage, uh, if the load is C, the voltage increase a lot. Okay, so we have some sense, right? So this is B. If this load is R, the voltage does not change much. If this one is L, we will drop a lot. If this one is C, the voltage can increase a lot. Example, maybe chunk capacitor that we use to increase the voltage. If we install chunk capacitor, the voltage is increased. If we install chunk reactor, the voltage will drop. Okay. So this is leading and lacking load. IL and then RC. Okay, this is IL and this is RC. So for IL, 
You can see that the voltage will drop, right? For RC, the voltage will increase. Okay, this is longer, so the load voltage increases. So in this chapter, we usually fix the angle of the load voltage to zero degree. We fix the angle of the load voltage to zero degree. You can see that this is V load, the angle is zero degree. This is V load, the angle is zero degree. And we just set the angle of the source to be delta. The angle of Vs is delta. How about this next time? But let's say we set the angle of delta S uh, of V S to delta. We set the angle at the load to zero degree. So we will talk about voltage drop due to constant impedance, constant current and also constant power load or something next time. So for today, do you have any questions?